When most people hear the term white noise, they think of static from an old television set or the din of an office ventilation system. But listening to white noise has been gaining popularity for a wide variety of purposes, and turns out white is not the only color of noise out there. Using white noise has become very popular and shows promise for treating many issues. However, studies have also shown that listening to colored noise could be detrimental to one's health. Listening to white noise is a common way to cover up the symptoms of tinnitus. People suffering from tinnitus hear phantom frequencies, which can be distracting or even disturbing. This is thought to be caused by trauma to the microscopic hairs of the inner ear, coupled with a disinhibition of the brain to filter out unnecessary signals. Listening to white noise may provide immediate relief to the person afflicted by covering these frequencies up, but it may worsen the overall symptoms by further disinhibiting the brain towards noise. In other words, if the mind is fed too much noise, it may lose its capability to filter out unnecessary signals throughout the day. Colored noise is also used to block out distractions and increase focus. In a noisy environment, for instance, one could play white noise in headphones to mask sounds that distract from the task at hand. This has been shown to be an effective tool for many people, and in clinical trials especially effective for those suffering from ADD. Colored noise may also help ADD sufferers to improve cognition, focus, and learning capability, and has been proven to have an overall calming effect. However, listening to colored noise regularly has been shown to compromise certain brain systems, lowering processing speed, attention, memory, and executive function. Lastly, colored noise is a popular tool used to improve sleep. Playing white noise during sleep has been shown to help people sleep longer, more deeply, and to increase the overall quality of sleep. Colored noise covers up distracting sounds and allows the individual to transition through various stages of sleep without interruption. However, sleep experts also point out that users of white noise machines may become attached to the sound and struggle to sleep without it, or they may experience anxiety when they know they will be without their white noise machine. With all this in mind, what differentiates the colors of noise that we mentioned earlier? Let's take a quick listen to a variety of noise colors and hear how they differ. White noise consists of random noise in all frequencies at the same amplitude. Our ears are more sensitive to high frequencies, so this noise sounds hissy. White noise is used for listening and for calibrating audio equipment. Pink noise is adjusted to make up for our skewed perceptions in order to sound even. It is scaled with more energy in the bass frequencies, which slowly diminishes at 3 decibels per octave. Beyond being used for listening, pink noise is useful for speaker calibration and room acoustics. Red noise is an even more extreme example of this kind of filtering. With red noise, the energy is concentrated in the bass frequencies and reduces in power at 6 decibels per octave. On the other side of the frequency spectrum, we have blue noise. Blue noise is slightly accentuated in the upper frequencies, with the power of noise rising at 3 decibels per octave. Sound engineers use blue noise for a process called audio dithering, which is intentionally adding noise to a signal to minimize any distortions that appear during the production process. Violet noise takes this to an extreme. The amplitude of the noise rises at 6 decibels per octave. Violet noise is useful for masking tinnitus because its high frequencies mask the tones heard by sufferers. Lastly, we have gray noise. Gray noise attempts to create a noise profile that has equal perceived loudness in all bands. This can be approximated by filtering the noise through a psychoacoustic loudness curve, such as an inverted A-weighted curve. It will sound like this. But this gray noise is not entirely exact because it does not take into effect the unique sensitivity of the listener, the profile of their playback system, the volume at which the noise is playing, and the space in which it is played. 
All these factors have an effect on how we perceive sound and what sounds even to our ears. A gray noise profile created for my ears and for listening to gray noise in my studio sounds like this. So there are many flavors of noise to listen to, each with its unique profile and practical uses. Remember when consuming colored noise that we are still understanding the possibilities for this technology, as well as the long and short-term consequences of its use.